Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome to the From the Depths Fuel Engine Tutorial, which is my, this is my third attempt at uh, recording this because I swear fuel engines are cursed for me. Now this is the part one of two. Part one is the basics, so it is what you see in front of here, in front of you here, and how to put them all together. Part two is going to be a tour of uh, the useful fuel engine platform on the Steam Workshop. So, if you're wondering how fuel engines work and how to make a good one, the short answer is to follow the link that will be in the description to the Steam Workshop and download the useful fuel engine platform by Guibi. I hope that's how you pronounce their name. And just look at that, prefab uh, the stuff on that, and reverse engineer, engineer everything you see on it. That is the short answer. For the slightly longer answer, stick around, we're going places. So, what are fuel engines? Well, they are the most basic kind of power generation in the game. I say most basic, they're arguably not the most simple, but uh, they are one of the primary ones. So, they are engines which use fuel. Fuel is produced by fuel, uh, by fuel refineries, that's these things. And this is probably going to deserve a video on its own, by the way, so I guess this is another three-part tutorial series, kind of. Anyway, these things produce fuel and they can be made more or less efficient. And fuel engines are the primary uh, means of using fuel and the main thing that fu fuel is useful. It's not the only thing, uh, other things do use fuel as well, but uh, fuel engines are what we're thinking of today. So, let's look at the components. First off, you have the generator. This is the key piece of every fuel engine and it is what you attach crankshafts to. Crankshafts are the second important thing. They are what connects cylinders to the generator, and cylinders are what actually produce power. So, those are your three main bits. And then you have exhausts, because exhausts are what cool the cylinders down. So, you can see there, temperature zero degrees right now, overheats at 95 degrees centigrade, and Basically, you need to keep this uh, below that 95 degree uh, centigrade mark to keep it working. If it is, if it overheats, it will stop working, you will not get any power out of it, and that is bad. So, the generator, uh, crankshaft, cylinder, exhaust. Those are the four things that you pretty much always need in a fuel engine. And it is possible to do something like this. And you can attach one cylinder, exactly one just one because the generator doesn't attach on any other side and you can make a very tiny one like that that is possible but it's not what you'd usually do so also what we have here also important thing to note uh, the adapter is a very useful thing if you want to make more complex engines because it allows you to put uh, to place cylinders away from the main crankshaft line like you see here very handy and these attach on all sides and is very useful and you can place them here, 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 and it's just, it's very handy. So those are the uh, three, or rather, I guess, uh, three and a half essential components to a fuel engine. And once you get those down, uh, you have to decide whether it's going to be a carburetor-based fuel engine or an injector-based fuel engine. Now that depends on what you're going for, because carburetors uh, provide a medium amount of power for about medium efficiency, but their efficiency can be improved by using superchargers and turbochargers. So, that is important to note right there. These things are more complex. If you're going with carburetors, you can get far more efficiency out of them. You could potentially make very clever engines that run on almost nothing and still produce lots of power. But, more on that later, because they're complicated. Start with injector engines. So injectors are exactly like carburetors, except they are more expensive. Uh, they only attach to cylinders on two sides. Uh, carburet carburetors can attach on pretty much every side. So if you go here, see it's attached, it's attached, it's not attached. It attaches on almost every side. My bad. I've had to relearn fuel engines a little bit in the past few days. So, difference being is carburetors are start up being just the, the average efficiency in terms of fuel consumption and average in terms of power. Uh, injectors provide much more power, about twice as much. You add a carburetor onto a fuel engine, you get 100 extra power. You add a uh, injector onto it, you get 200. So let's show you that right now. Boom, boom, and boom, boom. 
So here we have this thing as uh, got 10 power, because each cylinder gives you just 10. You add a carburetor to this, you have 100 power, you add an injector, you get 200 power. So why would you ever use carburetors? Well, carburetors are way more efficient. So, you see right here, 69 power per unit of fuel, this is the important thing to note. And, one other thing to note is that, uh, like, you see that uh, engines aren't running particularly hot right now, so you get, uh, well, these are the numbers you see here. To get an accurate idea of how efficient your engine is, you need to crank it up. So basically, you need to set it running at almost 100%. So, in order to do that, we will do this. So now we've got uh, all these shields all in a row, which, by the way, are... Uh, set to be huge and annoying so now we've got these things running at full burn so 69 power per unit of fuel okay okay and we need to do this as well just so this thing doesn't overheat 69 if we stick an injector on here it's got 200 power and now it's at 76 power per unit of fuel and you'll notice it's overheating uh, maximum power is dropping because the temperature is rising Or rather, not isn't. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Maximum power output is 199. Okay, so, remembering this number, that is 76 power per unit of fuel, we stick a carburetor on here. Wait, see? 76, 76, 76. It's now 83. So carburetors are more efficient, but give less power. And the trick with injectors is that if you use these things, you are pretty much committed to being inefficient and hogging lots of fuel, which is where you can use radiators as well. So radiators attach to either the crankshaft or the fuel engine generator itself. In fact, you can stick them on the back of the fuel engine generator, like so. Actually, no, you can't. Never mind, I lied. So if you're using injectors, you can do this. If exhausts aren't cooling the thing down fast enough, you can do this instead. This really uh, makes it inefficient though, so best not to do that. And you pretty much also never want to use radiators in conjunction with uh, uh, carburetors and all these other bits, because radiators increase cooling but greatly reduce efficiency, and just the whole point of the carburetor side of the uh, fuel engine uh, components is to improve efficiency, so you pretty much this over here is one side you can use, this side over here is the other. You pretty much never want to mix them. So, okay, that is fuel engines. Uh, well, that's injectors, at least. Doop. And so here we have this. And so now we move on to carburetors, how they work, or rather these bits. So, superchargers increase the fuel efficiency of attached carburetors for low to medium RPM. So, right here. So, these are pretty useless. Like... Pretty much, I've really never seen a really good engine use these things, because there's not much point, because uh, at low RPM you're using less fuel anyway. So, if we have a carburetor over here, so we see here, it's the da da da, remember these set of numbers, 83, 100, uh, 119, 83, 100, 119, it actually Okay, it's a little bit more efficiency across the board, but not that much. Hang on, let's see that again, because I have a horrible memory for numbers. 119. Okay, so, a lot more power per unit fuel low end, and just a tiny bit at the high end, so that's no good, really. Which is where we get onto turbochargers. Turbochargers are a different story. They are quite useful, so... Right here, you'll see uh, turbochargers uh, can be a bit of a pain in the butt to figure out how they attach to anything. So you'll see here that uh, the way this is oriented, it's got th uh, four bits to it. This top bit, so let's just look at this over here quickly. This white bit, that uh, uh, white tube poking out to the side of the thing, that attaches to the carburetor. Uh, that other thing that kind of angles, uh, right at this angle it's angling up, doesn't attach to anything, don't worry about that. Uh, this black bit, which is pointing off to the side, that attaches to the cylinder. And 
that thing on the back here, so that's pointing, uh, in this case, up, attaches to exhaust. So that's important. So we go over here, we attach it like so. So it's connected to the carburetor, and let's just uh, show you quickly how this works. So, look at this number, 83 power per unit of fuel. That spikes up to 97, so turbochargers are very, very important for ensuring that uh, your fuel engine is efficient uh, when it's uh, running full burn, when it's eating lots of power. And you can increase that further by linking exhaust to it. So, 97, and we will go here, like so, corner pipe. So remember, looking at this, 97, whoop, and still 97. Okay, so that didn't... Okay, I was misinformed right there. Damn it, this has happened every time. I've forgotten more about fuel engines than I ever knew. So basically, that's how uh, turbochargers work, because uh, you do need to still link up this back end to exhausts, because this does count as exhaust. It can effectively replace it on one side. So let's do the other side, and they come in multiple flavors. Right here, so if you put a block there, it does nothing. Gas in this pipe has no way of exiting the system, right. Now it can exit the system, so here we go. One, one, four way. Whoa, okay. So now, 113, well, one, yeah, 113 power per unit of fuel. That's pretty good. It's not as good as it could be, but it is pretty good. And so we can even stick a third one on here. And 130. Okay, so now we're getting a pretty a decently efficient. Don't have much power though. So the other form of uh, turbocharger is the inline turbocharger. So instead of connecting to the cylinder, this connects to exhaust system. So the way this works is a little bit different and is quite a bit more complicated. And this is where touring the useful fuel engine platform will be very useful, because it's a lot better uh, at showing it than I would ever be. So here, we do this, and let's see if I can recreate this magic. Carburetta, and let's see, exhaust goes here. I spent hours trying to bloody well figure out how all this works. Okay, I think we almost got it. That's exhaust. Nope. <sighs> Bear with me a little bit, guys. Oh wait, I remember now. I remember now. The trick with uh, uh, inline turbochargers is how you tetris the exhaust because it is a uh, can be quite difficult let's go here do that then you have to be clever and attach the white bits right there and even have to do some shenanigans like so okay this, so you see there. Inline terminal charges, you just have to attach the white bit uh, to a carburetor and hook these two other bits up to exhaust. So, in a way, they're simpler than regular turbochargers, but uh, in other ways, uh, not so much at all. It is quite annoying, actually. So, here, here, and here. Okay. We're getting some. Do, 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 do. So, that's how these things work. So, now what we have here, let's see here, 84 power per unit of fuel. Uh, not great, because uh, we only have uh, two of these things attached. And inline turbochargers, they're made more efficient the more exhaust parts passes through them. As far as I'm aware, anyway, you can see 
No gases uh, enter or exit the pipe system here. So temperatures, blah blah blah. Uh, blah blah blah. You know what I should do? I should do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy. Did that do anything? 84 power for unit fuel. So, that's how you use these things. Now, you might be wondering why on earth would I bother with uh, inline turbochargers uh, as opposed to regular ones. Well, that'll be uh, a tour for the UFET because if you hook these up correctly, if you get uh, proper amounts of exhaust uh, th flowing through them, they are potentially way more efficient. So, yeah, that's basically it, really. What on earth was I talking about? Right, this is a lot shorter than I th originally thought it was going to be, so... Uh, next uh, is the tour of the UFEP, and if you don't know what the UFEP is, it's this. Where are you? Where are you? This is the modified UFEP, by the way. And this thing has all the fuel engines you could ever possibly want. Uh, get you out of the water, though. So, it's uh, super uh, uh, well thought out. It's got engines from all over the place. And that's what we'll be doing next time. So, uh, and just a few things to note. Is that uh, on this platform, I'll be saying this next time anyway, is that uh, there are engines in which it says it... It's so efficient that it basically uses zero fuel. That was patched out two years ago. Other than that, this thing's aged very well. And bear in mind, uh, fuel is going to get nerfed at some point. It basically means that fuel refineries will be less efficient. As far as I know, fuel engines uh, will be uh, mostly unchanged. So, on that note, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you want, if you like. It really helps. Thank you all to my uh, thank you all. Blah. Thank you uh, to all my current Patreon supporters, and I'll see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.